present, along with counsel for the defendant, assistant state attorney, both sides ready to proceed. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, who will be the state's first witness? Maureen Daly. Okay. Let's return the jury. State recognized persons of the jury? Yes, Your Honor. And does the defense? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, members of the jury, did you follow all of my previous instructions? Yes. yes. State may call their first witness. The state calls Maureen Daly. Maureen Daly? Yes. And 
Did something unusual happen that morning? Yes, it did. Where were you just before this event we're here to talk about occurred? I was standing, putting something in the bin on my desk, and I had a, a folder in my hand. Okay. Was anyone with you? Yes. And where is your desk located within the office? It's within the office in 2009? Facing the front door. Okay. And who was with you? Otis Beckford. And who was Otis Beckford to you? One of the asso my associates. What happened after you were standing there with Otis Beckford on November 6th? Repeat. What happened? Unusual. When you were standing there with Otis Beckford on November 6th of 2009. He got killed. Okay. How did that event start? I was standing at my desk and Otis and I were laughing. I can't even remember what we were saying, but we, was, we were laughing. I was placing the folder in the tray and Otis was on the other side of my desk because he just came in the front door and paused at my desk. Okay, the front door from where? From the front entrance. Um, opposite. Okay. My desk. So he was standing on the other side of your desk? With his back to the door. And then what happened? The door opened with a force. The way our employees, somebody who's familiar with the door would open it. So it, the door is a, it's a lever that's on the door. So you, most people fumble with the door when they try to open it, but the person opened it with force and pulled it. And then what did you see? Again, Otis wasn't standing, was standing in an angle with his back to the front door. So I leaned quickly to see who the person was. Did you recognize the person? Yes, I did. What did the person do? The person then, usually if somebody comes into receptionist, they come to the front desk, but the person didn't come to the desk. They leaned to the plants against the wall, to that area of the, off, of the room and positioned themselves right in between Otis and I. Okay. Did you have a clear view of the person at that point? Yes, I did. Could you see his face? Yes. And what did the person do as they were along the wall? The person took their left hand, well, we had instant eye contact because my brain screamed Jason, what, what is he doing here? And he took, while he's still in eye contact with me, in eye to eye, took his left hand, brought it over to the right side of his body, lifted his shirt. What did you see when he lifted his shirt? At that point, I saw a gun in a holster in a, with a flap. I saw the hair in his stomach, and I saw the, the, the flap open. What did the person do once the shirt was up? He then, still in eye contact with me, put his hand into the holster, lifted the gun out, and started to lift. Did he get the gun all the way out of the holster? He got it out of the holster very quickly. And this is, again, all eyeball movements happening in a matter of seconds. He lifted it up. and. When he lifted his shirt, at the same time, Otis saw the gun. How do you know that Otis saw the gun? Because I can see in my, because the vision from where I am, I, can, I know that Otis saw the gun at the same time I did. Did he react? Did you see Otis physically react to the firearm? Yes. How did he react? Otis was leaning on my desk, because there's a candy bowl that was on my desk, and that's what he was fumbling through with his finger. And when he saw... Again, the movement of the door, the person's getting ready to pass him, and he turned to look. And as soon as he turned his head, and his, his eyes wasn't up at the person. His eyes was more, you know, because he's already leaning, and he just looked. And then when he saw, saw the gun, then he said, whoop, and shifted his body. And now, you just made a noise. He said, what? Otis said, whoop. Was he able to finish the word that he started to say? No. 
Why was he not able to finish the word that he started to say? Because in that split second of time, again, Jason and I were eyeball to eyeball, and he's lifting, he lifted the gun to come up towards me. But when Otis said, what? He shifted, and Otis shifted his body. Then the attention came from me towards Otis. So then he started to point the, he changed his direction like this. And as soon as he did that, at that point, I began to go down to the ground. Did you hear anything before you started to go to the ground? Yes, I heard the first shot go off. Did you actually see Mr. Beckford go to the floor? I did not see him, but I heard him. What do you mean you heard him? As I proceeded down to the floor, I heard the thud of Otis's body as it hit the floor on the other side of my desk. So was the desk between yourself and Mr. Beckford? Yes, it was. After you heard the first shot, did you hear any more shots? Yes. Just after that, the second shot went off. Do you know where that second shot went? Were you able to see or hear? If you weren't, it's okay. I cannot say <coughs> exactly where the second shot went, but I heard the second shot. How close in time, seconds, how many seconds between the first shot and the second shot? Pow, pow. Okay. And at this point, you're where? I'm on the floor, wriggling, waiting for him to come around the desk to finish me off. I'm waiting to die, and I'm praying. Okay. Now, were you able to see where the person with the gun went after you went to the floor? I didn't see, but I heard. Okay. What did you hear? The person, the, the boots, the kind of boots, the boots that he had, the shoe, shoe wear that he had on his feet. I could hear the, the boom, boom. Positioning of the feet as, the, as it turned from, from into the receptionist area. And then shortly after that, the continuous sounds of gunshots. Okay. Now you just described an event that occurred in the reception area, is that right? Yes. Would it help you illustrate your testimony to see a layout of the office building of the RSNH on November 6th of 2009? Yes. is access with a swipe pod. Okay. Is it, are employees able to access the building directly from the parking garage via the stairs? Only one, in two areas, from the ground level and from the sixth floor. And on the sixth floor, Prosecutors say 44. Would other employees use the elevator and come through the front doors yes. of the building? But again, only the sixth floor has access. Is that right? To yeah, directly to the building. Yes. Okay. Now I'd like to go back to the diagram again for a moment, if you may turn around. In 2009. Do you recall who occupied the offices on the inner corridor walking through the building? Yes. And if you could point at them and name them, uh, members of the jury. Let's do it this way. Start on the interior offices. Okay, this is Keith Brockman. This is 
side which is Neil, this is Gregory Kern, and this is James Beverly, and um, John Hornbeck. Okay. Now, in 2009, on November 6th of 2009, were you familiar with where the managers sat? Yes. Can you show us on the diagram where the managers of RS and H sat? Renato Gonzalez is here. James Beverly is over here. Jim Avitable is here. And what was Jim Avitable's title in November of 2009? Um, he was head of the transportation um, department. Okay, please proceed. And Jesse Force is here. And what was his title in 2000? Office manager. Okay. Now, you've described what occurred when you saw a person named Jason come into the reception area. Is that right? Yes. We're looking at some photographs of the old thing. Yes. And when I approached the witness, it wasn't the prettiest mark the state didn't see you in showing counsel. And those, uh, the images of those photographs clearly and accurately depict the reception area of RSNH on November 6th, 2000. Yes, it does. And at this time, the state seeks to admit state C into evidence as state's plea. What says the defense? No objection. It will be received in evidence as state's number three. Move the commission to publish state's plea to the jury. Next.
resignation now. That's where all this fell once it was shown. And if you can show us where you were standing when Jason entered. I was standing right here. And where was Mr. Bradford standing? He was right here on the, on the cross. <coughs> When Jason, before Jason entered, did you hear anything outside the doors? Any noise or talking or anything at all? No, no noise. And once he entered, did he say anything to you? No, he didn't. Did he say anything to Mr. Beckford? No, he didn't. And which hand did he draw the fire on with? His right arm. Last you said that you had gotten under your desk and you heard a series of gunfire, correct? Correct. Do you know approximately how many shots you heard as you were behind your desk? I stopped hearing after a certain point. I heard about eight or nine shots. Could you tell from the sound of the gunfire where it was coming from after you were behind the desk? that it was coming from down the hallway. Could you tell if it was moving or stationary? It was moving, but there were thuds of footsteps that just kept, that's all you heard is, is the stomping of, of, of rumbling of, of feet. How long did you stay behind the reception desk, if you recall? I don't recall because you lose track of time at, at time situations like that. But not very long. Why did you leave the area behind the reception desk? Because at that point when I stopped hearing, I was afraid that he was going to come back to finish me off, and I wanted to get up from where I was. Where did you go when you left the desk? I peeked out. I looked down the hallway. I didn't see him. Which, I didn't which see hallway him. are we talking about? The same hallway that I showed on the diagram. And I did not see anyone, but all I saw was smoke. And I listened. I didn't hear anything. So I got up. I, list, I had been listening for Otis to see if I heard any sounds from him, but I never heard anything from him again. Once he fell to the ground, I, got, I then peeked around again, didn't see anyone. So got where did up, you go? And then I scurried around the desk and I passed Otis and ran into the other suite, adjoining suite. When you say scurried, were you on your feet or did you crawl? I, I wasn't crawling, but I stooped down low. Did you look at Otis Beckford as you went by? I took a quick glimpse, yes. Were you able to tell if he was alive at that point? 
in my mind, he was gone. Why do you say that? There was no movement. From the time he fell, there was never any movement. And you said you went into the adjoining suite. Correct. And that would have been to your left, is that correct? Yes. And what was over in that suite? Our construction, construction services department. Was anybody in that suite when you got there? No. Do you know where they had gone? Yes. Where had they gone? One person went to the restroom, and the other person was out and about in the office on the other side. So when you got to that point, you were alone, is that right? Yes. At any point, did you make contact with another person in that suite? Yes. And when did that happen? Shortly after, I tried to find some place to hide, and I couldn't find any place, and I laid on the floor. I heard the front door of the suite I was in open. Okay, so not the front door to the business, but the suite. Yes. All right, and who opened the door? One of the young ladies that work in that area came back in the front door. And what's her name? Her name is Dana. All right, and what happened when Dana came in without saying what she said? When Dana came in, she looked over to the left and she saw Otis and she started saying, well, when she walked in, she said, what's going on? What's going on? What's all that noise? Without, without saying. Yes, sir. Sorry. Is there an objection? Objection here, sir. Respond. I'll rephrase the question, Judge. Okay, it's sustained. Without saying what she said, what did, what did she do when she came in? She said, what's going on? Without, without saying what she said. So did she go anywhere? Did she come toward you? She, after she realized the situation, she then, and I said to her, get well, down. Where did you go, if anywhere? I was on the floor okay. in, in an office. Did she join you on the floor? No. Where did she go? She ran under the receptionist's desk in that area. Okay, so now there were two of you, is that right? That is correct. Did anybody else ever enter that suite prior to law enforcement arriving? Yes. Who else entered? The other gentleman that works in that area, his name is Steve. Okay, and how did Steve come to end up in that suite? He came in from the main office area and scooted under the desk with Dana to calm her down. What was Dana's emotion like at that point? She was freaking out. And you were under a different desk, is that? Yes, I was in an office on the floor. Did anybody else join you at that point? No. Uh, what happened after that? After that, I had called 911. They gave me instructions. I remained where I was until sometime after I heard voices in the 800 suite. Were you eventually able to determine whose voices those were? Yes. And whose voices were they? It was Natalie and Ken Van Belzen. And what's Natalie's na last name? Rodriguez. How long after you heard their voices until law enforcement arrived? Minutes. Okay. Now, you said you've been employed with RSNH for 10 years, is that correct? That's correct. So were you employed with RSNH at the end of 2006 and the first half of 2007? Yes. And when you were employed there, did you come to know a employee named Jason Rodriguez? Yes, I did. Did you interact with him while he worked there? Yes. What was the nature of your interactions? Again, once he was employed, hired by the company, I had to do his paperwork. Um, I told him a little bit about the company, about the office. I then would, after completing his paperwork, I would have to get his driver's license to fill out his I-9 forms. I then um, would send it up to our headquarters in Jacksonville, so I interacted with him at that point. But for any anything that goes on in the office where they have meetings, I would be involved. Okay. 
Would you see him come and go out the front door? He mainly went out the other, one of the other exits. Were you anything unusual about your brief interactions with him during the course of his employment? No. Would, is it fair to say that you saw him on several, many, many occasions throughout the course of his employment? Yes. Is it fair to say that you recognized his face? Yes. Going back to November 6th of 2009, did you recognize the person who had the firearm and shot Louis Becker? Yes. And who was that person? That was Jason Rodriguez. And do you see the person that you shot, excuse me, that shot that day, and you know it's Jason Rodriguez here in the courtroom today? Yes. And could you please point to him and describe something he's wearing? That's Jason Rodriguez over there in a uh, shirt, open collar, red, white stripe. You may the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant. The record will so indicate. I don't have any further questions. Thank you, Mr. Cross-examination. Just briefly. Ms. Daly, do you recall speaking with the police on the day of November 6, 2009? Yes, I do. Do you recall them asking you um, about Jason Rodriguez that day? Yes. Do you recall telling the police that you always had a fear about him coming back after he had been fired? Yes. Do you recall what you said about why you had that fear? It was a joke between myself and one of the other girls in a joking gesture that we were having um, one day. So it wasn't something that I felt on a regular basis that I carry with me. It was just a joke that was made that one time. Do you recall telling them that you felt that Jason was a little off? Just quite, just a little different. No further questions. Can you read a rep? Yes, Your Honor. I'm here. Ms. Daly, you said it was different, right? Yes. Anything unusual? You see him talking to himself? No, I never saw him talking to himself. Anything of that nature? No. Anything ever discussing delusions or anything of that nature with you? No. Anything about sharp tooth or anything else? No. No further questions. May the witness be excused? She is about to say the floor, yes. Should be excused by the defense. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You may be excused. Okay, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the time is now approximately five minutes to the hour of noon. We're going to go ahead and recess uh, for lunch. Plus, I have to do something for you since I didn't get back to after 8.30 last night. Uh, I'm going to ask that you uh, not discuss this case among yourselves nor with anyone else. I'm going to also ask that uh, if uh, you're in the elevators or around and someone starts discussing this matter, please ask them to cease uh, because you are juror on this case and you don't want to hear anything. If they persist, find the first court deputy you can find and advise that court deputy of such. Please do not read, watch, and listen to any news accounts of this case. And do not use any electronic devices to search for any information about this particular case. Any additional instructions on behalf of the state of Florida? No, Your Honor. Or the defense? No, Your Honor. Members of the jury, please return at uh, 1.25 so we can get started at 1.30. Thank you. Have a good night. Sure, yeah.
back and answer the fire if I go through the 